All right, welcome into this deep dive case study. We are here with Jason, an amazing business owner who, man, Jason, you're just such a stud, by the way. When I sit down and as you and I have talked through stuff, Jason has some incredible business management skills across multiple domains. And he's also done a really good job as we've worked together of actually like implementing the stuff we've done while having an eye towards how can I make sure that I can delegate this stuff moving forward, which I just, I love the mindset that you've Definitely. taken as we've worked together, man. I, w I would love for you to just briefly introduce yourself, the type of business that you run. Let's start there and, and then we'll get into the next phase of things. Absolutely. Thank you for the kind words, Alex. I appreciate it. Uh, so I'm Jason Malky, uh, founder and CEO of Startup Boost. Uh, essentially, there's two main pillars to our business. Uh, one is that we are essentially a, um, think of it as a startup business events ecosystem. We also have about 25 tech events a year mixers, panels, investor nights, expos. And our main focus is uh, tech startups specifically. And uh, the other part of our business, which is correlates back to the events is we're a digital agency. So we help startups across uh, digital marketing, whether it be B2B or B2C. Uh, we do uh, PR work, uh, deck design, uh, and as well as fundraising. We have a large network of investors from our events and from our ecosystem invest in startups, we also uh, consult a bit there. So that's kind of a high level on us. You can think of it again as like business events, ecosystem slash digital marketing agency, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. And you have, by the way, if you're listening to this and you're in the startup world or looking at raising capital or connecting with, uh, with uh, venture capital firms, Jason is like the most connected person in the world. You should see <laughs> his Rolodex of people that he knows that the business model that you've created, Jason, is mind-blowingly smart. Uh, but you also have just done such a good job of creating connections within your world. I would love to know, uh, and those listening, just will you just get into a little bit of what were the financial, whether it's concerns or hurdles that you were facing in the business before we worked together that yep. prompted you to say, oh, this is a time when I need to focus on my business finances. Yeah, definitely. I think I think actually the way you got my attention was one of your Facebook ads. And I think it was something around a profit calculator. And for me at that point of the business, I didn't have a good, clear like, grasp on my economics or even like unit economics in my business. Um, it was very much like my mindset. And, you know, I, I guess I have more of like a sales and marketing background. I'm really not a huge numbers guy. And I'm at the point in my career where I kind of would rather focus on my strengths and put my energy into that and then delegate uh, what I'm not great at, or people like yourself, Alex, and your team who are phenomenal. And so I said to myself, okay, yeah, I, I don't really know what my profit is, right? I, I just kind of, my rev, my my finance mindset's like make more sales, make more money and figure it out from there, right? And so, you know, it was something that started to keep me up at night because I was like, hey, like, you know, some months I do well in terms of my take, my take home, other months it's mediocre. And I felt like if I had a better grasp on things, it'd make me a better operator. And it would eventually even impact things like, you know, uh, my pricing and other nuances of the business that come full circle. Uh, and to kind of compound that, I was also hiring, or I'm still hiring uh, at the time of when I engaged you. So the big part of it was, hey, like I need to have a very um, clear, uh, you know, compensation model for my team so that I have strong retention. Because I felt like, hey, look, if I came to an organization, it wasn't clear on you know, how I make money or how I can, you know, capitalize on my efforts and, and get some sort of you know commission on certain things. Would I really be motivated? I feel like the answer is no. Um, so like there's multiple reasons we engage you, um, and and I will kind of go into it I'm sure later. But it really helped us to, through each of those nuances and, and create a lot of confidence. And honestly, I can sleep at night now knowing like I have a legitimate you know approach to my finances and our business model and uh, you know what my team gets uh, for their efforts, whether it's their bases, commissions, and I mean, even to go a little deeper on it and not to kind of take too much away from what we'll probably get into, but like when you point out certain things around things I didn't even consider like delivery, like I, would, I didn't even categorize delivery as a part of like our uh, like expense model, just like, hey, sale, uh, you know, cost to pay employees, be like, hey, no, no, like who sold it? What's the unit economics there? Who's delivering that service? What's the unit economics there? And you even help me to say, hey, look, for that delivery element, here's a way to like get some cost savings and we kind of tell me a bit about around delegating, hiring the right types of people. So anyway, I don't want to take away for the, from the rest of the conversation, but those are just some like key highlights in my mind uh, when we first engage in, and again, definitely helped with a ton of that. Yeah, I love it. And one of the conversations that we've had a lot about is the tax side of being a business owner. Yes. I'm curious what you felt like the questions that were swirling around in your head before we engaged together on the tax side. And, uh, and maybe this is a two-parter, 
why don't you feel like we have gotten that as business owners before? Because it, it's one of the number one concerns that we get is taxes yeah. and how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm curious, what were there any specific questions swirling around in your head before we started oh, diving definitely. in on the taxes that were like, ah, oh, dude, this stuff frustrates me. How do I understand this, this, or this? Absolutely. So uh, first thing is on taxes, you know, being a, a first time founder, business owner, I've been doing it for about a decade now, but when I first got into it, uh, you know, you know, going up in school, I mean, I didn't major in accounting or anything like that. So, you know, you think, hey, I go to work, I get a check, the government takes their taxes and the rest is mine, right? Uh, when you own a business, uh, essentially you're responsible, right? And so, you know, that compounded for me over the years and eventually I tried this big tax bill and I was like, oh man, number one, that's not good for me, right? And then, you know, part of my team are 1099s. Uh, so I said, hey man, like a lot of them are kind of younger and getting into this. I feel like they also don't understand that there's tax ramifications with your income as a 1099. So, you know, one thing that you really helped with was like, Hey, Jason, here's how to calculate each dollar in terms of what your take home is, uh, you know, what goes to the team, like we touched upon a minute ago, and also what needs to be set aside for taxes. Right. And for me, it's actually, I mean, I probably think going back to like, you know, not being able to sleep at night, I said a lot of it was around taxes and knowing how to like properly, properly deal with that. Um, so yeah, you've been, I mean, now it's like, I, I make money and I feel like, you know, there's no stress of like, oh shoot, am I making money? But then like, I'm going to have this huge tax issue. It's like, no, I, I know how to now like kind of facilitate that income in a way that, that mitigates, uh, kind of like that build up of, of a tax bill. And for my team, I've educated them too. I said, Hey guys and gals, like, here's how that works. Um, I recommend, you know, you have a separate account, like Alex has coached me on, um, and you know, set that aside for taxes. Yep. So that's been a huge win. And, you know, I, I think a lot of marketing companies, like, I mean, especially agencies probably have a pretty heavy roster of 1099. So, you know, I'd say to any, you know, other agency owners out there watching this, like, hey, look, if you want to have retention, you don't want to like uh, put them in a position where they have a huge tax bill. Like, oh man, like you guys, you paid me hundred grand or whatever, 60 grand last or whatever the number is. I got this bill and like now I, I need a pay raise or something to, to make up for it. So kind of knowing it for yourself, but also for your team is crucial as a leader. So that was a uh, absolutely huge. Um, what was the other part of the question? I'm sorry. It was the no, that was that you totally nailed it with that. And it's, yeah. it's funny because I, I went through the same thing early on in my business journey, which is why we're doing what we're doing. We made, yeah. you know, we made our initial money and it was like, Whoa, what do I do with all this? And we were making all these plans and I was like, Oh yeah, I think I have to save for taxes. Shoot. What's that going to cost? Yeah. And I remember spending Uncle weeks, Sam. literally, yeah. yeah. Spending weeks trying to figure out before I could pay myself we spent weeks figuring out well, what is this going to be? How much do we owe? How do I, how does this even get calculated? Such a headache. And then the whole interplay between, Oh, it's personal taxes over here, but do I have business taxes separate? How does this all work? And it's just so confusing and nobody ever was out there teaching it. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, uncle Sam just expects you to know it or else they're going to find you up the wazoo. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, actually in, in that same vein, I mean, something you've also taught me, which I'm working on implementing now is, uh, you know, I was, well, I am an LLC. I'm in the, in the process of transitioning to a corporation because you know, I think you gave me some certain threshold. I think it was a hundred grand a year or something like this, where like, I didn't even know about those tax benefits of becoming a corporation versus like an LLC. So like, that's like another benefit that I'm gaining from you is like, Hey, now I can have a setup where I have like a base salary, some dividends. And, you know, it's not just about, Hey, like, Hey, switch to this different entity. It's like, and here's why. So like, for me, that's helpful because now, it's like, you know, you didn't give me a fish, you taught me how to fish, right? So for me, like that's, you know, for someone who's an entrepreneur and, you know, hopefully well, most likely have future ventures, it's like, you know, that stuff will stay with me for for my career, which is is huge, you know? So that's an important nuance as well. Yeah. I, I would love to know, and thank you for the for the kind words. I would love yeah. to know, what's your aim? And there's, I'm, I'm totally not looking for any specific answer here. I'm just curious, what do you sure. feel like your aim is as a business owner? financially like what is it for you that drives you is it like dude i've got a specific like i know yeah. some of the stuff you got coming down the pipeline with your family and what you guys are looking to do but like what why work hard to to make something happen financially for you what's what's the motivation for you specifically? Definitely. yeah i mean i think well now i'm 35 right so if you asked me that question when i was like 20 or 21 that would have been very different uh, back then i probably wanted to go out and have fun and you know do certain you know things i'd probably regret later but uh, now at this point in my life, I'd say, you know, for me, it's actually something I think you've actually brought up. Well, you definitely did bring up uh, Alex yourself was like, I think you know, one of our conversations was like, hey, like for, I think you said for you personally, like you wanted to retire your wife, I think was something that was like one of your goals. And like, you know, that's starting to become actually one of my goals personally, where it's like, all right, how do I get to the point to where like, I'm, I'm in Alex's boat where like now my wife's retiring and like, you know, 
you know, we can start to grow the family and stuff like this. So I'd say now the motivation is a lot more, I think, a lot wiser, right? Like for me, it's like, you know, have enough to like, you know, can grow my family, you know, retire my wife. Um, you know, we're, we're hopefully a couple months after like buying a house. So, you know, continue to have like that stable kind of savings that goes towards the down payment. So I, I think for me, it's like now the motivation is like, help myself, my family, and honestly, my extended family, right? Like my parents, if I can help them or, you know, certain you know, siblings or whoever, just being able to like, you know, uh, help those who are close to me ends up being my motivation now. Whereas like back in the days, maybe it was a little more selfish when I was a little younger. Now it's more like, how do I help my family, my community and that type of thing. So yeah, for me, that's like a huge, huge driver. And I think that's uh, plenty for me personally, at least in terms of keeping me motivated. Yeah. You know? I love it. And it's interesting how those motivations do change over time. You get into business yeah. initially thinking like, oh, I want to be able to just spend like crazy and do X, Y, or Z. And it's like, well, maybe there's something a little bit deeper here in terms of what I really right. want for my life. And that motivation often actually is the impetus for the kind of change that you've made over the past few months as we've worked together. It's like, oh, definitely. Gosh, like if I'm going to go get a, a home loan or I'm going to go uh, have kids or, you know, whatever, it's like, oh, that, that changes how you start thinking about the business. And it, early on, you reinvest so much into the business, but then it's like, oh, wait a minute, just reinvesting back into the business doesn't, doesn't satisfy everything else that life also demands. Yeah. yeah, I think also you're kind of touching on a broader point on um, essentially in my mind, like what I consider like company culture. It's like you want to have a company culture of like measuring twice, cutting once, right? So whether it's your finances or your marketing or your any other certain, you know, strategy or uh, operation you want to like execute on as a company. It's like, if you start to kind of have that top tier approach to everything, look, sometimes you can do that in house for sure. But other times you do need to outsource because for two reasons, right? One is, again, if you want to grow and scale, you can't do everything. There's only 24 hours in a day, right? You know, two, it's like if someone else is expert in something and you're really a novice, it's like, is it worth the pain of like years of like, doing your research, succeeding and failing, whereas it's like, hey, or I could just turn to Alex who does this for a living and he can kind of help me through, you know, essentially help me to save a lot of my energy and avoid a lot of pain, really, you know? So to me, it's all, uh, it starts to even come back to like company culture in my mind and yeah. how, how you think about uh, scaling and, and yeah. that, that type of thing. I love it. Thank you for that. Uh, I, I would love for someone who's listening right now and it's like, hey, I'm, the stuff that they're talking about, I, I like the principles, I understand what they're saying, but what's it actually like? And uh, and is it going to be worth it for me as an individual? Would you just talk about what you feel like has actually served you well, or what, what did you like about the experience of working together that has, has worked to actually make some kind of financial difference for you in the business? Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I mean, I think uh, one, I guess, uh, you know, not to comment on you throughout the whole uh, podcast or the conversation, but, uh, you know, honestly, like they say, like, uh, you know, it's in business, like two ears, one mouth, like listen more than you speak. And I thought you do a great job of that, honestly. So for me, it was like, it. I, I never felt like, you know, the experience was cookie cutter. I always felt like, hey, like Alex is listening. We're, you know, we're, we're addressing very specific issues for my business and my challenges. And to the point to where like, you know, there's certain scenarios, like you create a custom calculator for me and like we went line by line and I was like, hey, like this, you know, I have this many people on this side of the team. Here's how I currently um, essentially like pay them out. I showed you my old, kind of antiquated Google Sheets that were really time consuming. Like, all right, Jason, that's like archaic. Here's how to do that in like two clicks now. And like now at the end of the month, I do my numbers. It's like uh, five minutes versus what took me a half hour to 45 minutes, right? So, you know, for me, it was like through the experience, I felt like you continually, uh, you know, kind of where it made sense and where it was efficient, we're willing to kind of get off the script and be like, all right, Jason, like I understand your very specific problem. Like we need to set aside like two or three calls just to drill down on that and create a process that's more efficient. So by the time you walk out of this program, you've solved for X, right? So I feel like for a lot of different business owners, like X can be a moving target, or it can be different across businesses. So the fact that, you know, you really hone in and work to, again, understand, listen, understand that, and then come with a solution, I think is, is huge. Um, and I think that's really, if I'd have to guess, like probably the anxiety for a lot of people deciding whether or not to move forward with like your program or really any program is like, hey, you know, am I going to be listened to? Are they truly going to like be able to solve my very specific problem? And and at least in my case, I can't speak on others. I would assume the answer is a grand slam as well. But for me, it was a grand slam. You know, you guys really crush it out of the park and uh, super happy, super happy uh, with all of it. I appreciate that. Thank you for the kind words. And the the meaningful part of that from my perspective is that we not only had those conversations, but then we built the tools or talked about what you needed to do and you went and did it. And that at the end of the day is what actually makes the change in a business owner is look, get the, get the right 
eyes or ears on your business. It takes two to tango. Yeah. It, it, it absolutely does. And you've been a, a very good uh, business dance partner for lack of better, yeah, 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 yeah. better analogy there. Um, so my question for you now is, how do you feel like what we've done has prepared you for the stuff that you want to accomplish next? I mean, we had some really fun conversations as we looked at, like, hey man, you know, if you guys are gonna buy this house, like what is it, you know, what do we need to generate from the business and we're making cash decisions and all that. What yeah. do you feel like in terms of, okay, now that we've done this, I feel better prepared to blank in the future. What is that for you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think kind of just broader for a sec, like you kind of said earlier about like, you know, I think you said something like, you know, we all don't get, we haven't educated, or like myself, like again, like I was taking an accounting class in high school. I wasn't educated on it. I feel like I've, I feel like I've been through almost like a school program and that like, you know, just like I learned, you know, writing, I, I've learned more about accounting now in the real world. So I can take that, whether it's, all right, I need to calculate things to buy a house to your point a second ago, or... I am now starting a new venture and I need to build a sales team. I need to have certain like resources to be able to out of the gate, have a good, uh, you know, uh, compensation structure. So to me, it's like, it's, it's multifaceted in terms of like what I'll take with me. And again, I, I almost, again, compare it back to like, I took a court, like I could have gone to an Ivy league online program for, you know, some of these schools and done it. But again, like that would even be something where like, I'm just kind of another person in the classroom where I was like, this is like education on steroids. And it's like from an expert one-to-one, -one, uh, like premium, like granular uh, type thing. So yeah, it's almost like, but I almost think of it as like, I'm walking with like a degree from, you know, CEO Finance Academy type thing in my mind, at least, you know, so that's kind of what stays with me as much as my bachelor's degree does or some other, you know, I've taken other sales courses where I've gone certain certificates where, you know, I, I put that on my LinkedIn, like, hey, I went through this program, you know, for me, that carries weight. So when someone comes to me, maybe in the future, I'm going to raise money and an investor looks into my background and I tell her he has a sales uh, certificate, he's got an accounting certificate through you guys, and then he's got his actual college degree. So it's like, all right, he's well-versed in, you know, finances, he knows sales, he knows, uh, you know, whatever you studied in college. So like, you know, it, whether it's like literally a certificate that I, or something on my LinkedIn or just stuff that I know now moving forward and I can just apply in so many different ways. So and I have your email. So if anything, I don't know. I just thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. And the, right, and my listen, last question and, for and, you. And, 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 and I mean, at that point, and the connection with you guys. And I know you guys have an open line of communication now. So it's like, I carry that relationship moving forward in my career. You know, if anything I really need, I could always reach out and see if there's something there. So. Good stuff. Uh, I want to ask you one last question. This is one that I actually get a lot from people who are considering working with us. Yeah. And they say, well, what's the ROI? And, uh, and this is something that uh, admittedly, I always struggled to come up with. Here's the number. All right. This is a 10 X yeah. ROI. It's like, what? how would you quantify the ROI that you've gotten out of working together? Yeah. I'll give you two that come to mind right away. One is again, I've mentioned a couple times, but retention. So now like my sales teams or my sales team is happy. We've agreed on the conversation based on like our conversations are happy with it they're more comfortable knowing like, Hey, look, if I do, you know, X amount in sales, this is my net. So me not having to like rehire or like have a high churn in my sales team. And I mean, there usually are high churns in sales teams having that down pat. I mean, that saves me a lot of money and time, right. Two, I mean, very specific scenario. Um, not to let all your tricks out of the bag, but like for us, uh, there's a big part of our delivery that we were going to keep on shore. Uh, that was going to cost a really pretty penny and essentially like, I'd have to get to probably five X the accounts um, to get to, in terms of like covering the overhead of what this, the delivery role would cost me versus what you advised me on, which is like, you know, having a VA and, and, and by the way, she's been absolutely phenomenal. It's like, she, her role nice. is like growing in the company. Like I get her at, at a fifth of the price and she's super happy with her compensation based on where she lives and all the economics there. So now I can scale that uh, delivery of, of specifically our lead generation role, which, you know, for me, like the savings there is like, you know, again, I have to have a, a fifth of the accounts to generate the same income for my business. So like, that's a lot of money. So that's like legitimately dollars and cents that like I will now save, which I mean, you know, it was a, a, a penny saved, there's a penny earned or whatever else. It's almost like that same spiel around my cost now to have that delivery person. Uh, who's a virtual assistant, again, it does just about a good a job as someone, even if I hired a high school, uh, college for maybe, you know, 50 grand, which would have cost me a lot more than what I pay her. So, I mean, those are two scenarios. One is the retention on just the sales team and any role in general now moving forward, you know, being very transparent about our, our comp structures and having some like actual like process behind that. And then two is again, literally like you've helped me to analyze my business on a, such a granular level that we identified a role that I was essentially overpaying for, you know, got a VA and, 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 the clients are super happy. There's literally no uh, 
like decrease in quality of our, our delivery. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I love that. Thank you. And it's cool to see that, you know, that's something that we don't get, we don't cover with everyone because they don't have that need. But again, getting back to like, Hey, this is a need that you had in your business. We were able to yeah. identify it. And now you have that process down for every role moving forward. And, yeah. uh, and that mode of looking at the business through that lens, uh, which will serve you for forever. Very cool. Jason, I want to respect your time. We're at the top of the, of the hour here. Thank you for, uh, for sitting down with me for a little bit to dive in and look at what is it like uh, when someone engages with us and what are the reasons that, you know, agency owners, marketing owners, in your case, startup uh, event businesses, what are the reasons that, you know, they're losing sleep at night and how can you address those? And I think the, the a key takeaway from our work together for, uh, for my purposes is that you you have always had this eye for how can I set up the system, get it clean enough that I can work on it in minimal time or hand it off and then just move. And that has been such a part of, I think your growth is I've looked at yeah. your team and the way that you've structured your processes. I've learned a lot from it. I would love to know last thing, if somebody wants to reach out to you and your company and engage with you guys, how can they yeah. find out about you and what you do? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, my direct email is jason at startupboost.com. Uh, there's no A in startup, unfortunately. So it's S-T-R-T-U-P-B-O-O-S-T.com. So jason at startupboost.com without the A. Also, if you go to our uh, website, we have a newsletter that goes out about twice a week to about 30,000 subscribers. So if you want to keep up with you know, the startup ecosystem more broadly, we do a ton through our newsletter. We're very active there. And again, if you want to email me directly, the uh, line's always open. Love it. Jason, thank you so much. Appreciate you being on here, my man. Thank and you, Alex. for Appreciate sharing your story. It. We'll see Absolutely. Ya. My pleasure.